Just because something doesn't go according to our mind's plans of how it thinks things should go, doesn't mean that we are out of flow. Welcome to It's About Magic, a sanctuary for seekers, dreamers, and those curious about the deeper mysteries of existence. Hosted by an expert in bridging the practical with the magical in the realms of holistic counseling, quantum human design, and the gene keys, every week we give you practical tools, meditative exercises, and insightful guidance to unleash your magic so you can tap into the unlimited potential inside you. As humans, we have this expectation that everything will always be the same. When it's good and when it's bad, we get so hooked into the expectation that nothing is going to change and that what is right now will be forever. When things are going really well, like the sun's been shining and it's warm, and then the rain and the cold and the damp come, our minds associate that with, oh, now life isn't going my way. It's totally normal for life to be sunny and then rainy, for life to feel really good and then for us to encounter a challenge or a struggle. The more attached we are to the expectation that things will remain constant, the more we get hooked in to the disappointment when things inevitably shift. This is also true on the opposite side when things aren't going so well. We get so hooked into the fear that this is going to last forever. And so then we fear the things we can't control, like our emotions, the weather, big changes. And while we have influence over how we move through these experiences, We can't control them. It's our ability and the willingness and the art of leaning into the ebbs and flows and cycles of life that make what we can't control flow more easily. It is in the acceptance and compassion for ourselves that sometimes we're just going to feel shitty and that's okay. I once read a book called The Continuum Concept, and it's written by an archaeologist who is studying the fourth trimester of babies in remote, remote tribes down in South America. One day she was walking along the riverbanks following the members of this particular tribe. And they were carrying a heavy canoe along a very rocky and wet bank. And what she observed that as the canoe slipped and bounced through their hands, they laughed at the whole experience. They delighted in the canoe and how it was doing whatever it really wanted to do. Upon reflection, this author noticed that in North America, we typically would not respond to a heavy canoe bouncing uncontrollably along a riverbank. Instead, we would probably get angry, frustrated, um, with red faces and sweat and wondering why the hell it wasn't working. We expect everything to go according to our mind's plan. And if it doesn't, it affects our mood or our beliefs that there's something wrong with us, something wrong with the world, or something wrong with all of the people around us. And so then we get angry, throw our hands up in the air, and walk away defeated. I read this story about 10 years ago, and it stuck with me. And the reason I love it is because it shows how much we have this longing to control everything and how much we allow the fear that is behind this longing to control us take us out. When I look outside my window and I watch the hummingbirds 
dive bombing for insects. I sometimes wonder, do they get upset if they miss the bug? Probably not. They probably just buzz around and wonder if they can get it on their next go. Or they look for the next bug. The hummingbird doesn't try to logically understand where that next fly is coming from. Nor does the hummingbird try to logically understand how it makes its massive trek from Mexico up to Vancouver Island every year. Hummingbirds are tapped into an ancient wisdom and knowledge built into its tiny body. And it flows in connection with the universe, the quantum field, the magnetic pull of the earth, the innate knowing and location system in its nervous system, or whatever you want to call it. And they follow that. When I watched my cat Lulu bouncing around the living room trying to catch a fly that got inside, she doesn't turn around and pout when she misses the fly. No, she chases it until she's complete with it. And then she watches it and then something else catches her attention and in inevitably she curls up and has a nap. It is such a waste of our precious energy to make meaning out of things that really have nothing to do with us. You've likely heard that we create our own reality and to some degree I believe this is very true. But just because something doesn't go according to our mind's plans of how it thinks things should go, doesn't mean that we are out of flow. When we spend our life in the logical part of our brain trying to understand everything, we miss out on the mystery. Magic for humans is when we can learn to return to that intuitive knowing that exists inside all of us and let it lead. Then we can allow our brains that are designed to be logical and understand broad concepts to follow the intuition. Magic is learning how to use our logic, intuition, heart, and body in the way they were designed to be used. The mind is here to dream, to understand, hold big concepts, track pros and cons, make sense of the world, and it will create stories about absolutely anything and everything. It is the storyteller. If you want to be the true creator of your own existence, if you want to truly create your own reality, we need to understand that your mind does not lead the way. Your mind is not in charge. You, your higher self, that witness part of you, you are here to lead your mind. You are here to choose what the focus will be and where to turn your attention. So if we go back to the members of the South American tribe, they were raised with a mindset to see life from a perspective of joy. I imagine they were raised to understand that they are a part of the whole, a part of the river, a part of the rocks, of the canoe, a part of the wetness, the rain, the water that made the rocks slippery. And that these things are not here to bend to their will nor work the way they expected them to in order to make themselves feel better. When we can see ourselves a part of the whole, this leads us to working with the energies around us. We become like the hummingbird. We become like my cat, Lulu. 
And we become like those tribe members that joyfully laugh at a perceived difficulty. The rocks and the rain don't care what you want. Rocks and rain are just being rocks and rain. The canoe is just being a canoe. And just because you're slipping and sliding around and you're getting wet and it's not going as planned, this doesn't mean anything about you. The only thing that means anything is your perception and your emotional response. We're all conditioned or programmed to live in fear. Fear permeates every part of our existence. It begins with our very intelligent nervous system that is designed to keep us safe from imminent danger. This is how our body keeps us safe. Is it asked, the nervous system is always asking, am I safe or not? So at some level, fear is necessary at this moment in time in our life to keep us safe from something that is imminent. But what has happened in our existence is that there's fear that permeates the mind. It is imagined fear, thought fear. And so the first thing that needs to happen in order to dance with life is to acknowledge where is the fear trying to control you? What is the difference between imminent danger, fear that we need to act on now in the moment, and perceived fear, thought fear of what might happen in the future or what we believe about ourselves in this moment? When I think back on these, these canoe carrying people, I, I continue to think of how many times in my life I've been and continue to get frustrated by things that don't go according to my plan. And this story has, has really followed me, has been with me as I continue to get knocked off kilter throughout my days, my weeks, my years. Surprises pop out of nowhere, and I still get excited, angry, frustrated, or sad. And what I've learned from all of that is to ideally be able to chuckle at my own desire for everything to go my way all the time. Just like those tribes people chuckling at the canoe. But to be honest, I've got to be in a really good headspace to be able to laugh at myself if things don't go according to plan. But what I have found over the years is that I can place my hand on my heart and have compassion for myself there. So much of what we do in Western society is beat ourselves up for not for things not going right or not not doing things right. Even in the practice of self-compassion, we might go, oh shit, I was supposed to have self-compassion for myself there and then beat ourselves up. We are experts at this. And this stifles us. It puts so much pressure on us and it limits us. And so if you, at some point in your day, find something that's not working the way you want it to, and you notice yourself getting frustrated or your self-talk turns negative, the best thing you can do for yourself is to just place a hand on your heart or on your stomach, whatever feels better to you. Because this simple act of placing a hand on a sacred part of your body signals to your nervous system that, hey, we're okay. There's nothing in this moment right now that is of imminent threat. We're doing okay. And then ask yourself, can I find an element of self-compassion here with what makes me uncomfortable? Things will rarely go as planned, but we don't have to let this disempower us. Because what's the opposite of disempowerment? Empowerment. Which, remember, is another word for magic. <laughs>